Hi, my name is Kelly Morris, and today I am going to be talking to you about how to do a no spend month. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about a no spend month, and you're probably hearing and reading a lot about the no spend month challenges on the internet and on YouTube and so forth. As you can see, I still have my Christmas tree up because it brings me joy on January 3rd, and I just haven't decided to take it down yet. But no spend months do not have to happen January 1st. Um, they can happen any time of year and actually I like to do them a couple of times a year, the beginning of the year and then somewhere around mid-year just to shore up my spending, just to tweak the finances just a little bit more. So if this is the kind of content you like to hear about or anything about homesteading or sustainability, hit that subscribe button below so that you can be notified of, um, of this kind of content when I post a new video. So today now, if you happen to be one of the people that um, has decided to take this journey with us for a month on Gently Sustainable, um, I'll have that, that um, link below, you're going to get a couple of things. You're going to get a, uh, a, a couple of free printables to help you uh, along this month. So we've got the no spend month here, the first and the second. You see I've colored in because I had successful days. It's still kind of fun to color in no matter how old you get. And then I've got another uh, printable that will help you get through the month with just tips and, and that kind of thing that you can keep on the fridge and keep track of how you're doing on your no spend. But if you'd like to have support and you'd like to receive a daily email with tips and tricks and ideas and encouragement to keep you going through this whole month, sign up for our um, no spend month challenge. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy it and find it find it helpful on your journey. Okay, so when you do a no spend month, remember this is a choice that you're making. Um, it's actually one of the best financial decisions you can make. And I'll tell you why is because taking a month off from any uh, discretionary spending, uh, things like eating out and buying clothes and picking up makeup and uh, that latte out and lunch with your girlfriends and whatever, all those little things add up like you would not believe. It doesn't seem like they would, you know, a dollar here, five dollars there, ten dollars there, who cares? But at the end of the month, uh, you would be completely blown away as to how much money you are just flitting away on, um, on things that really don't matter. Actually, and if you don't believe me, take an envelope and put it in your purse or your wallet or your car or whatever, and for an entire month, uh, write down every single expenditure from the gas you buy, from the pack of gum you buy at the gas station, from that coffee you drive through and get or lunch. If you write everything down for an entire month and keep your receipts and keep track of every single dime you spend, believe me, it, there is so much money going out the door that is not going to pay down debt, pay for college, and, and meet other sinking fund needs that you might have. So that's the power of this no spend month. You are going to be blown away at how much more money you have um, by sticking with this and, uh, and joining, again, joining our group. Okay, so I can't emphasize enough how beneficial a no spend month is gonna be for you and how much it's gonna just recharge your motivation for your finances and recharge your, uh, your budget. Okay. So, um, so make it a choice. Don't, don't be a victim in it. You know, I have to do this, you know, make it something that's good for you. Kind of like losing weight. You know, I mean, how much fun is it to lose weight if we're moping around that we can't eat our ho-hos, you know, you, you want to be excited that, Hey, I'm going to be healthier because I'm not going to be eating these ho-hos anymore. They're not good for me. So the, the same thing goes for this make a decision that this is going to be a good thing for you and your family and your goals. The cool thing about a no spend month is that you get to make your own rules. You can do this any way you want to do it. I tend to be, um, you know, kind of a type A, you know, do it all kind of a person. And so I, I eliminate all um, discretionary spending. However, you might, maybe you, maybe you struggle a little bit with uh, clothes shopping. And maybe that's what your no spend is, no spend on clothes 
for the month of January or whatever month it happens to be. Maybe you have an eating out habit that needs to be curbed. Okay, no eating out for that month. Even if you choose to just take one category <clears throat> and make that your, your no spend um, or no spend weekends or no spends, you know, Sundays or whatever it is, you're still gonna make a difference. Okay, you're still gonna make a difference, but I, and you, again, you get to make up your own rules, but I really wanna encourage you to try to, other than the things you need to live, okay? Um, now, of course, you're, we're gonna pay our bills during this month, okay? You're gonna pay your rent, your mortgage, or your utility bills, and your food, uh, parenthetically, we're gonna come back to food. You're gonna pay, you know, your car payment, um, if you have one. You're gonna pay tuition, you know, wh whatever those things are that, that are mandatory for, you know, your life to, to go on pretty much. But you, so when you, when you go to the grocery store and you, buy, um, and you buy food during this month, before you set foot out of the house to go to the store at all, you're gonna to wanna to take inventory of what you have. And by that I mean you're gonna look in the cabinets, you're gonna look in the pantry, you're gonna look, um, at everything you have and you're gonna work really hard this month to get all of that eaten up and only buy at the store what you need to work with to be able to make your meals for the month. Making a monthly meal plan is not a bad idea to just sit down look at the month that you're dealing with and if your kids are going to school every day then you know you've got lunches to pack and you've got dinners to make and you know just kind of sketch out it doesn't have to be anything fancy but just kind of sketch out okay you know you're going to need um, these certain things to make this month work another really good idea <clears throat> so that you don't get you know sort of whacked halfway through the month um, because you weren't thinking about it, is to take a look at, uh, at the month that you're going to be doing your no spend and look for things like birthdays, anniversaries. Um, are there things coming up, weddings, that are gonna be unavoidable, that you're going to need to spend money for a gift or, um, you know, or something like that? Uh, depending on what it is, uh, you, you may or may not want to consider doing it another month if you've got a whole lot of those kinds of things. That's what makes January so cool is because everybody, you know, Christmas is over. Everybody's sick of spending, at least I am. I am sick of sick, 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 except my tree. I do like my tree, but I am sick of all the rest of it. Um, I'm sick of packages coming to the door. I'm, <clears throat> I'm sick, so I am good and ready, and I don't have... Well, my one daughter-in-law has a birthday in January, but we don't buy gifts. We just uh, send a little card or whatever, you know, and or have some coffee with them or whatever. So I'm, I'm going to consider all that in this in this month. Um, little kids' birthdays and and th things that kids need for I don't know, field trips and stuff. You know, you you got to kind of take all that into consideration and do the best um, that you can with it. Now, there's no perfect month. Okay, there are going to be times that despite your best efforts, something's gonna happen. Your dog is gonna get sick. You're gonna get a flat tire. Things like this happen, okay? And that's just life. And it doesn't mean that you failed your no spend. It means that life met you during your no spend, okay? Say you just have a day where you're just like, your nerves are shot, you stop and you get a latte to coat your nerves, okay? It, it's okay. You, you didn't fail the whole thing. However, you do not get to color in <laughs> your little circle that day. You get an X. But the beauty of this is you just hop on to the next step, okay? Just pull your big girl pants up and say, okay, tomorrow's another day. Another tip um, for staying on track during a no-spend month is try to avoid those areas of temptation. Um, don't go to social gatherings, you know, or avoid them, or sort of rewire them. You know, if you've got a group of friends that likes to get together and go out for lunch or dinner or whatever, or drinks, I guess, if you do that kind of thing, you know, make it a, uh, make it a potluck at your house or at their house and, um, and don't spend anything, you know, to go out. Um, tell, share with your friends and family that you're doing this um, so that they don't just think you're cheap this month. Just say, you know, I'm trying to kind of get ahead on some bills and get ahead on some other things and I'm doing a no spend. Is there any way we can work around that? Okay, so there's something to think about. I have a friend that I like to have coffee with once a week or so, and um, she knows, <laughs> if she's watching this video, she's laughing now, she knows that in January I'm not gonna go out for coffee and that she's gonna come over to my house and I'm gonna make her 
some muffins or something and we're gonna drink coffee at home. And, um, and it's just, you know, it's just the way we do it. So um, anyway, another thing to remember is that during the month of January, if you've noticed, everything is on sale, right? All the Christmas stuff, all the decorations, all the crap that the retailers couldn't get rid of now is 70, 80% off, okay? You don't care, okay? You don't need it. I don't care if it's 99% off, it still is gonna cost you 1% of that sale price. And you don't need it that bad. You really don't. I mean, unless it's, uh, you know, medication or, you know, I mean, there is nothing at the store that most of us can't live without. And here's the thing about sales, they keep coming around, you know? Um, here, here's the other thing about sales um, is that, you know, everything has a life cycle, right? Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, on Black Friday, I bought myself an Instapot. Now, I am not, if you know me at all, I am not a big uh, gadget, uh, kitchen appliance kind of person. Everything I have has a purpose and does multiple things. So I just wasn't digging this Instapot thing. Well, I did a little bit of research, was watching some videos. I didn't really realize it was a pressure cooker. I thought it was kind of a glorified crock pot. And so I thought, you know, I'm gonna wait and just see you know, I'm not spending $100. I think they're $119 now or something. I'm not spending that much money. Well, they were half price on Black Friday, 69 bucks. And I really decided that that thing would bring value to my life. It would help because we do a lot of whole food cooking and so potatoes and rice and stuff like that. I thought, you know, this could be a pretty cool thing. So I bought it and I love it. I'm using it all the time. Actually, it uses about a third of the energy of my oven, which I'm now hardly using at all. Nonetheless, let's say I hadn't bought that Instapot and now it's January. Well, guess what? They're back up to 119 bucks. But let's say maybe, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, I, I couldn't find a great price. You gotta remember as the sales cycles go, okay, pretty soon nobody's gonna want these again. Everybody's gonna be thinking about pool season and the summer and garden and everything. And nobody, ain't nobody gonna want an Instapot or much of anything else to cook inside because people are gonna wanna get outside. Just remember things are always rotating. So guess what? I, I told my sister who wants an Instapot, wait till garage sale season. I guarantee that you are gonna find brand new Instapots in the box, people who did not know what they were or what to do with them for 20 bucks. Just wait, you can wait. All right, another tip for your no spend month is to stay busy. You know, I mean, if you were finding yourself spending a lot of time shopping just to kill time or entertain yourself, and then now you're not doing those things, you're gonna have some time on your hands. So, you know, there's no lack of things to do at, at my house and we run a small farm, so I've always got things to do. But if you find yourself kind of bored needing things to do, you know, pick up a new hobby, get on YouTube, you know, go to the library and check out a bunch of books like I did yesterday. I brought home like five new books, you know, free entertainment. I love to learn and learn new skills. Um, you're not going to get to buy any supplies or anything, <laughs> but you know, if you could use what you have. I also am a quilter and I, and I love January because I'm just ripping apart old clothes and things that, that I'm not going to use and that I can cut up and make things with. So you're going to have to find ways to stay busy and, uh, and you're going to find you have more time and it's really more more meaningful time. It's more value. I mean, how valuable is time walking around looking at, you know, junky polyester shirts at the mall? I mean, you know, you gain nothing from that. But think about things that you could make or learn how to do or bake or, you know, whatever. Whatever has been interesting to you, grab a book, learn how to do it, get on YouTube, whatever. Another great use of time during a no spend is to sell your crap. It's true. You have crap. We all do. I think uh, I read somewhere that everybody has at least $300 worth of stuff that they could sell in their house at any given time. I think it's at least that much. So I think uh, that's another good thing to do. Go through your closets, go through your kids' closets, look at those shoes, bikes, skates, crap that you never use that you're not going to use. That might be brand new sitting in the box, but guess what, you're still not gonna use it. And sell them, okay? Sell them on Facebook Marketplace or wherever, you know, have a plan of garage sale and uh, depending, you know, what part of the country you live in and get rid of it and take that money and apply it towards your goals for this no spend. I mean, that is just such great use of time and free up that space in your house. 
Okay, and lastly, remember, if you mess up, it's okay, okay? It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of your no-spend month. Just pull the panties back up, get, get back on the horse, and get on it, okay? So I just want to encourage you that you can do this. You only have to take it a day at a time. You only have to take it, you know, an hour at a time. If you can find a buddy who might want to do this with you, that kind of makes it fun, too. Um, most of my friends think I'm weird for doing this, so, um, and it's a good thing I'm an introvert. I kind of like to do things by myself. Anyway, but look for ways to just make this successful. You're gonna feel great. You're gonna have a lot of money laying in your checking account that you don't know where it came from because you stopped buying stupid things, you know? I mean, seriously, so many people buy so many stupid things and then they wonder why they don't have any money. Um, so, if you have one of those bad habits that you need to break, uh, maybe it's smoking cigarettes, maybe it's vaping, drinking, whatever. All those things are expensive. I'm not judging. I'm only judging from the point is that those things are too daggone expensive, okay? Even if cigarettes were good for me, I wouldn't buy them because they just cost too daggone much. If you notice, I'm drinking water. I drink water and coffee most of the time. Um, every great once in a while, <clears throat> you know, I might have something different. I, I, have, I drink a lot of green tea, um, things like that, but I don't, you know, okay, my husband is a Diet Coke addict. I, I guess I'll go ahead and admit that. And I do drink one once in a while, but you know, um, those are habits that, you know, they're not serving you well. You, you need to get rid of them or at least greatly reduce them. I wanna tell you a quick story and then I'm gonna wrap up about a friend of mine who um, is disabled and really has needed a car. She hasn't been able to afford a car and, or anything else that comes with a car, gas, insurance, repairs, all that crap, okay? And I sat down with her last year and we had a discussion about how much she spends on cigarettes, energy drinks, um, junk food at the grocery store. And do you know what? She can totally more than afford a car. Uh, if she watches her budget, but you can't have it all. You know, you can't, you can't have it all. And so you've got to make your choices about it. if you want to keep those habits, that's fine. But you've got to understand that your financial situation probably isn't going to look much better next year if you don't make some changes. All right. So that's it for me today. Again, here's my motivation. College. I've got two kids in college right now. Uh, we're trying to help them get through without any debt. And so that is my big why. And so I really wanna encourage you, whatever your why is, write it on there. You know, when you have a day where you wonder, what, what in the world am I doing this? Oh, that's right. I don't want my kids to graduate with a whole bunch of debt that they'll be paying off until they're 40 years old. And that's important to me. And your why needs to be important to you. So sit down and think about it. If you and your spouse, or if you're not married or whatever, think about what your why is, or you might have several whys, whatever, it's yours. This is your no spend month. You can make it anything you want it to be. Just make it good, okay? And again, if you like this kind of content, subscribe. If you think you have a friend who might like this video, share it, thumbs up, all that junk down there. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.